Hi, my friends. My name is Mr. Steve, and today is our very first The Zoo and You story time. We call it The Zoo and You because every single week we have a different animal that we concentrate on. So whatever animal the animal of the week is, we read a story about that animal, and then Lee from the Records and Burpee Children's Zoo creates a video that's about five, six, seven minutes long about that animal and you get to learn lots of really good information about those animals and see them really up close. And then after Lee's video's over, we come back and we do an activity and then we make a craft together. Or I'll make a craft and you can decide whether you want to make it at home. Are you ready to find out what today's animal is? Okay. First of all, put on your zookeeper hats. Oh, here it is. All right, and drum roll, please. Today's animal for the zoo and you story time is the camel. If you were thinking camel, give yourself a pat on the back. If you were not thinking camel, give yourself two pats on the back. Now, first off, I have to tell you something. When Lee told me that our first animal was going to be the camel, I was super excited. Do you know why? Because when I was four years old, my favorite animal was the camel. And I loved the camel a lot. Now, we might see camels around here in zoos, but camels don't really live around here, do they? No. A lot of the times they live in the desert. And camels have something very special on their backs. Humps, right. Some camels have one hump and some camels have two humps. This is a two hump camel. Did you ever wonder how camels got their humps? Well, an author by the name of Rudyard Kipling thought that and wrote a bunch of stories about how different things came to be, including how a camel got his humps. And we're going to read that story. It's in this book, which is called Just So Stories. There's a whole bunch of stories in this book. We're only going to read the one about the camels. I want to tell you, though, there's a lot of words on these pages here. So I'm not going to show you the words. I'm just going to read them like this. And then when we get to a page that has a picture, I'll show you the picture. There's only one picture, but it's a really nice picture. And this story doesn't take too long to read. This story tells of how a camel got his big hump. In the beginning of the years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of the howling desert because he did not want to work. And besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most idle, just sitting around, not doing much. And when anybody spoke to him, he said, humph, humph. Yeah, just humph and nothing more. Presently, the horse came to him on a Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, camel, oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel. And the horse went away and told the man, Presently, the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the dog went away and told the man. Then the ox came to him with a yoke on his neck and said, Camel, oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three, oh three, I'm very sorry for you, with the world so new and all, but that hum thing thing in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. Well, that made the three, the horse, the ox, and the dog, very angry. And they worked, and while they were working, the camel came over chewing milkweed 
not doing anything else at all, and laughed at him. There's a picture of the camel chewing the milkweed, laughing. Then he said, what do you think? Humph! And went away again. Presently there came along the jinn in charge of all the deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Jinns always travel that way because, you know, it's magic. And he stopped to work with the three. Jinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the jinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert. He's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. <whistles> said the jinn. That's the camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, humph, said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? No, only humph, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the jinn. I'll humph him, if you will kindly wait a minute. The jinn rolled himself up in the dust cloak and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel, most idle, just looking at himself in a pool of water. <laughs> My long and bubbling friend, said the jinn, what's this I hear of you doing no work with the world so new and all? Humph, said the camel. The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand, just like this, and began to think a great magic while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning on account of your idleness, said the jinn, and he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Hmm. And the camel said, Hmm. I shouldn't say that if I were you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, Humph, again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great, big, lolloping hump. Do you see that, said the jinn? That's your very own humph that you've brought upon yourself by not working. Let's see, today is Thursday, and you've not done any work since Monday when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this humph on my back? That's made on purpose, said the jinn, all because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your humph. And don't you ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to those three and behave. Humph yourself. And the camel humphed himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. From that day to this, the camel always wears a humph. Well, we call it a hump now, just not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days he missed at the beginning of the world. And he never yet learned how to behave. And that's the end of the story of how Camel got his hump. Now, do you think that's a true story? Well, I'm not going to tell you yes or no. What I am going to tell you is we're about to show the video from Records in Burpee Zoo where Lee introduces you to two camels, one in particular, and teaches you all about them, including what a camel does with its hump. Watch this. Everybody, my name is Lee and I want to talk to you a little bit about camels today. I think camels are among the most amazing animals. So many parts of their body really help them to survive. They're just unlike any other creature out there. This is Cotton and in the background there somewhere is Curly. Uh, they're going to be playing the part of the camels here today. Hey Cotton, turn around here.
Now, camels are used around the world by people. They're very useful animals because they can survive in all different kinds of settings. You know, people think of camels as living where it's hot. And in many cases, they're living in dry deserts. But deserts aren't always hot. It can get quite cold in the desert at night. And camels are able to take the extremes of hot and cold, uh, which is uh, very important to them. Now, they're able to help people out by carrying things on their back, by pulling plows, and also people ride them in areas. They're very sure-footed, and they can go in places where trucks and jeeps and where even horses and donkeys might not be able to go. Now, many parts of their body really help them, and uh, one of these most amazing parts is their feet. They've got big, flat feet. It's kind of squish out. They don't have a hard hoof like a horse has. A hoof enables a horse to run really fast. But what a camel's foot does is it allows him to walk through the sand without uh, his feet sinking down in the sand. They kind of act like a big snowshoe. They kind of squish out. They've got two toes, unlike a horse, which just has that one toe or hoof. Now, very often where they are, it's very sandy. It could be very windy. Uh, so they have to watch out for this sand getting in their eyes and ears. And so camels have hairy ears that keep the sand out. They've got nostrils that they can actually pinch shut so the sand doesn't blow into their nose. And they've got eyes with big long eyelashes uh, to keep the sand out of their eyes. Now I think the most recognizable thing about a camel, of course, is its hump. People a lot of times think, think that a camel stores water in its hump. Well, kind of, but not really. They have fat and moisture or wetness. And uh, this, they can absorb into their body. If they don't have enough food, they can absorb that fat to use like food and that moisture to use like water. If a camel is really fat, has eaten a lot, they're a very well-fed camel, they'll tend to have a big hump. And for a camel that's living where there's not a lot of food, their hump might sink down a little bit. So that's what that hump is for. But it gives them a very distinctive silhouette. Now another really noticeable thing about camels are their cush pads. You might notice they've got big calluses on their knees. They've got them on their front knees. They've also got them on the back. And they've got a big thick plate right here. These are called cush pads. Cush is the down position. It's when a camel lays down on its chest. And in most places in the world, if you're gonna ride a camel, the camel has to sit down like that and then you get on before they stand up. Well, these cush pads are places where they've got calluses and that protects their body from the hot sand and from um, sharp rocks. So, if you ever see a camel and you're kind of concerned why they've got those big uh, calluses on them, camels are actually born with those and they just get thicker as they get older. So and that's another thing that's very useful for them. Now, cotton right now has got a thick coat. It's uh, late springtime here in Massachusetts, so he's still got a lot of this hair, but it's starting to shed out and he's gonna lose this hair. We'll help him by brushing and pulling and getting all that hair out, and then they'll have a pretty flat coat. So that thick coat helps them to stay warm in the winter, and then it sheds out for the summertime. Oh, you itchy, you itchy? Now camels are herbivores. That means they eat plants, just like a person who's a vegetarian. Um, they eat leaves and grasses in the desert. They could eat cacti and uh, They'll even, if there's nothing else for them, <clears throat> they may even chew on bones they find in the desert. They can survive with very little food and very little water if they have to. That's not good for them, but if they have to, they can do that. Now in the desert, they could go a long time without drinking water, but like I said, that's not good. And living with us on the farm, they drink water um, throughout the day. Well, like I said, camels eat all different kinds of plants, but like us, they like to have treats now and then, and one of their favorite treats, just like a horse or a cow, they love to eat carrots and apples. Here you go, buddy. 
Want to go see your friend? Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's go see Curly. Come on. It's time for bed. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> enjoyed meeting our camels and learning a little bit about them. Until next time, this is Lee and Cotton and Curly. See you later. Did you know the dromedary camel has one hump and the Bactrian camel has two? Wasn't that amazing? I loved seeing the camels up close like that. Can you see why camels are one of my favorite animals when I was four years old? Yeah, I bet you can. All right, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do an activity that has to do with animal silhouettes. What's a silhouette, you might wonder? Well, a silhouette is a kind of shadow. So it's the shape of the animal without any of its colors or its facial features. I'm going to put one of those shapes, animal shapes or silhouettes at a time in front of the camera and I'll move it along and let's see if you can guess what the animal is before it leaves the screen. Does that sound good? Okay. I know this might be really easy for some of you, but it's still pretty fun. To make it a little more challenging or interactive, if you know what animal it is, I would love if you yelled it out loud and acted like the animal too, maybe even making some of the noises that the animal makes if you know. Are you ready to try it? All right, here we go. Our first animal is coming up to see. Oh, there it is. And that was the rhinoceros. Animal number two. That was the zebra. Did you get that one right? Let's try number three. Number three was the giraffe. Let's try number four. Number four was the kangaroo. And now number five. I think you're going to get this one, I hope. You better get this one. The camel. And then one more animal. This is my favorite animal now that I'm a grown-up. And that was the elephant. How many of those did you get? Did you get a lot of them? I hope so. All right, we have one more activity we're going to do, and that is making a craft. It's craft time, everybody. So I'm going to show you how to make this craft. It's pretty easy to make, and then you can choose whether you want to make it at home or not. Well, you know that in front of me is only a couple of things. A white piece of paper, brown paint, a paintbrush, and wet wipes. What we're going to be doing is we're going to make a hand print camel. So uh, get your hand ready and paint it up. So when you're painting your hand, a couple of things to keep in mind. One is to make sure you're painting all of your fingers and none of your toes because that's not going to help with the handprint. No toes, yes fingers. Um, what do you think the fingers are going to be? There's four of them. Yep. They are going to be the legs. And then what do you think the thumb is going to be? If you said the neck, you were right. 
All right, so good enough for now. So you put your hand down just like you would normally. This isn't anything different than you've done before. I'm sure you've done handprint animals before. All right, let's see if we did a good job. Yeah, that's not bad. It's important, though, to have wipes. And hopefully you're not wearing a nice shirt doing this either, just in case. I'm not wearing too nice of a shirt. So what we have to do now is we are going to have to go and fill in the spots that didn't quite get filled in from the handprint. Okay. So we see a big opening there, we'll fill that up. We need to connect the neck. Um, the legs look decent, but we want to make sure they're connected to the body because camel's legs are connected to their bodies. And we want to have a hump, so make sure you make a good hump. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice hump. All right, now for the neck. The neck's a little different because you have to extend the neck out a little bit, like so. before making the head. All right. So you can see that might be the beginning of a camel. After the camel paint dries, you can bring out colored pencils or markers, and you can fill in the rest. So I made a tail, too. Oh, I forgot to do that in this one. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There's a tail, so make a tail. And then you can also then put eyes and an ear, nose, mouth. I put hooves on there. I also use the um, colored pencil to make the end of the tail. It's a lot easier to make with a colored pencil. But that is a camel handprint. And that also, my friends, is the end of today's Zoo and You story time. Next week, our animal is going to be the tortoise. And I've already seen the video that Lee made for the tortoise. And this tortoise that we're going to meet is a really special tortoise. And I can't wait for you to see him. I hope you have a great rest of the week, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.